Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day everyone. My name is Nurul Anis binti Hasni and in this video, my friends and I would like to share with you guys one of the most important topic that will be discussed which is leadership and management in school. I am going to be the first presenter. My name is Nurul Anis binti Hasni. So the second presenter is Nur Komarina binti Normi. The third presenter, Nabila Alfa binti Nur Hisham. The fourth presenter is Nur Alisa binti Azunam. And the last presenter will be Siti Nur Shahira binti Zahri. So in this video, I will share with you guys about what is leadership and management, the differences between leadership and management, and the characteristic of a good leader. The second presenter, Nur Komarina binti Normi, will share with you guys about the types of leaderships, which is instructional leaderships, transactional leaderships, and transformational leaderships. The third presenter will be Nabila Alpha, and Alpha will, will be sharing about issues and challenges in leadership and management in school, and the differences between novice teachers and expert teachers. So the fourth presenter is Nur Alisa binti Aznam. Alisa will be sharing about school management issues and how to improve school leadership and management. And the last presenter is Siti Nur Shahira. Shahira will share about the importance of leadership and management in school and also conclusion. So we move to the first slide. So do you guys know about what is leadership? Okay, leadership is a process of social influence which is maximize the effort of others towards the achievement of the goals. Leadership means different things to people around the world and different things in different situations. For example, it could relate to community leaderships, religious leaderships, political leadership, and also leadership of campaigning groups. Leadership is the ability or quality to motivate and inspire others to achieve a desirable goal. So now we already know about what is leadership. Now we move on to the what is management. Management is the process of planning and organizing, implementing, coordinating and controlling activities. Management is aimed to achieve organizational goals in an efficient and effective manner. According to Harold Kant, management is the art of getting things done through others and with formal organized groups. So now we already know about what is leadership and management. All right, we move to the next slide, which is the differences of leadership and management. Leadership is focused only on people while management is focused on all the resources of the organizations. Management creates conditions for the development of the school organization while leadership has its own executive duties. Management is essentially a teamwork while leadership is an individual thing and not to forget management manage things while leadership is lead people. The first one as you guys can see here a leader must motivating and inspiring others. An inspirational leader does not tell employees they are deeply committed to their customer experience. The leader also must demonstrate their commitment and passion in every meeting, presentation, and how they handle the school problems. The leader behavior must inspire employees to act the same ways. Secondly, a leader must encourage others to accept changes. In order to encourage the employees to accept changes, the leader also listen to their feedback, acknowledge their feedback, and explain to them why and what is the purpose to make the changes. Next is respected and trusted by others. The leader must show a good attitude to get respect and trust from the employees. The leader must bring the good influence and open-minded, also responsible and good attitude, trustworthy and warm, open-minded and creative thinking. So that is leadership. What about management? 
what is their roles. Management or manager is directing and monitoring others. Manager is a problem solver at the school. They are doing administrative job, managing school finance, managing academics, manage the school formula formulate policies that best suit the needs of the school. They are also participate in decision making of the school. We move to my last point, which is the characteristic of a good leader. A good leader must have the characteristics such as honesty and integrity, confidence, commitment and passion, delegation and empowerment, decision making capabilities, accountability, creative, and clear goals. A good leader personally impacts on others in order to encourage creative thinking in the organizations. They use intuit and intuitively determines what to do. A good leader also directs energy towards people and leading them into practical solutions. As a leader, they must see the work as a something new, full of excitement and accept it as a new challenges for them. A good leader must also must have the integrity to commit to the success of each team member by modeling qualities such as fairness, honesty and commitment. This will inspire others, especially the employees, to act in the same way while building trust and respect. So that's all from my part. I will pass to the second presenter, Nur Komarina Mintinormi. Alright, next, I'm Kamarina and I'll be cover about the types of leadership. In this type, we have three types of leadership, which is instructional leadership, transactional leadership, and transformational leadership. So what is instructional leadership? Let's take a look here. Um, leading learning community or known as instructional leadership, which is... Uh, which means that motivating teachers to teach and creating safe teaching learning in a school condition, in a good condition, okay? So, it is mostly it is involved a, a principal becoming a leading learners who are successfully collaborate with other schools to get the community and support the improvement of the improvement and achievement of the student. Okay, next. There are three major themes in that involved in this instructional leadership at school. The first one is performing an instructional leadership theme with an expert. So in this part, uh, which uh, a group of contributors who work together to provide a promising solution for a shared mission and vision. They have their own vision and mission they, and they also have their motto to support each other, to support the classroom teacher and useful classroom instruction. Next is managing instructional mismatch. In this part, it is uncommon that principal and assistant principal have to expertise in all subjects they supervise. Uh, the supervisor might have in-depth contact in pedagogical knowledge and one disciplines. The last is fostering teacher leadership to support instructional leadership team. So in this part, uh, the classroom teacher is the most influential influential person into student, which means uh, the teachers will be the role model of the students at school, and everything and every kind of uh, student needs, uh, we they will ask for teachers um, teachers opinion and what so on. In this transactional leadership, they are separate into four dimensions of transactional leadership, which is contingent reward, lasers fairy, active management by exception, and passive management by exception. Exceptions. So let's take a look one by one. What is contingent reward? In this part, uh, they are only and they are only use smart goal to the subordinate and it's more to give reward to the successful performance. Uh, what is smart? Smart is mean the key word that they use such as S for specific, M measurement, A attainable, attainable R realistic and T timely. So by these five um, Five point. They are going to use this for the successful performance only. Next, we move to the lasers. Lasers fairy. 
in this part where the group, the leader group will provide a good environment to get many opportunities to make a decision. But the leader, the leader avoid to making a decision, avoid of um, making a and they are making assumption and they are often lack of direction. Next is active management by exception. In this part, they actively monitor the work of their subunit, which uh, watch for deviation from rules and standards and taking correction action to prevent mistake. Lastly is passive management by exception. They are interfering uh, for only standard and they are not met when performance is not as an expectation, which means they are will not uh, reward and something like that. And they are may use punishment as a response because or they are not achieved their target. In this transactional leadership, they are have advantage and disadvantage of this work. So let's take a look. The advantage of this transactional leadership is they can be they can award those who are motivated by self interest and follow instruction. So the higher they can get and the more they will be rewarded. So it will give an engineer structure for large organization system requiring repetitive tasks and infinitely reproducible environment. Uh, this advantage also they can achieve a short term goal quickly and will be rewarded and penalty defined by the workers but this event for the disadvantage of this transactional leadership is uh, the rewards uh, the worker will be rewarded by the practical level only such as uh, money and perks so by creativity will be limited since their goal and all their goal and objective are already set up so this is not a self reward initiative lastly is transformational leadership in this part uh, where leadership and a leader who are work with team who are work in team and others to inspire collective commitment and sacrifice sacrifice toward a vision of a better future this is not like a transactional leadership because this is not based on give and take a relationship but they are only for the leader's personality personality traits and ability to make a change to through example and through the own performance achievement so this is have their own perception and value and change expectation and aspiration of other employees in this transformational leadership they have four terms the four important things that should have in transformational leader such as idealization idealized influence which have which are the leader are proposed driven and he or she can be a role model and walk to the talk to others uh, to, to the others opinion and they they also have to be bold next is inspirational motivation which are the leader should be inspiring with others with other people and inspire other followers to become like him or her next is individualized consideration which mean the leaders uh, have must be a people driver genius concern for needs of followers means that the leaders are concerned and and need to know what others need uh, lastly is intellectual st stimulation which is uh, the leader should have innovating skill and the challenge of the followers to be innovative and creative because they might be the one who inspire others and they must be bold to give open opportunity to others to trust them the differences between transformational leadership and transactional leadership uh, for the transformational leadership there are only public and private acknowledgement of achievement which are higher level needs only but in transactional leadership there are low level needs and they have rewards and punishes uh, in transformational leadership they have delegates to the staff to act the automatically autonomously or in a in a small group but in transactional, they have micromanaged team to ensure process standards are met, which means they are organized well. So encourage next is encourage change and thinking outside the box. But the transactional, they avoid change and want to keep the same things. 
So what's our leader doing and the lower level will follow the high level. So and lastly is concern with ideas over process. But in transactional, they are concerned about the process over the ideas. I mean, the idea will not uh, not will go wild, but they only focus on the process, how, on how they are going to do this work, how they are going to use their, their work and performance achievement. That's all from me. Next, I will pass to the next presenter. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nabila Aufa. Now we are going to continue with the topics of novice teacher and its challenges. Before we proceed with this topic, we are going to define what is novice teacher and expert teacher. So basically, novice teacher is a teacher who has no more than two years of experience in the classroom and is new to the professions. A novice teacher will meet the their mentor once their mentor once a week to discuss lesson plans, management, and instructions. They arrange for their mentor to observe and provide confidential feedback while they teach. Meanwhile, a expert teacher is a person who can do or perform his or her job at a high level without exerting excessive effort making it appear automatic and effortless. Others would argue that experts are most knowledgeable and experienced uh, representative of their field. Before we go further, let's take a look on the differences between novice and expert teacher. Firstly, in terms of planning, expert teacher consistently connect curriculum with their goals. Novice teachers have this tendency to focus only one short-term planning. The expert were found to plan for a long-term ideas well versed of the relationship between daily objective and the overall curriculum. Second, expert teacher will, will teach with their guts and trust their teacher's voice. They are able to do so uh, spontaneously but in coherent manner. Meanwhile, novice teacher were found to mentally script each section of the lesson. Novice teacher at times even plan on what we on what way to greet their students, let alone be the interactions throughout lesson. So let's admit that all of us are guilty of doing this, even during our practicums, perhaps night before our first micro teaching class. Meanwhile, expert teacher plan more strategies to teach specific skills and to implement their lesson largely unrehearsed point um, to the instructional period. They just talk to what they would like to talk and able to relate it back to the lessons. Next is novice teachers have not yet mastered their management techniques. Novice mostly will be unaware on it, some instant ignore classroom uh, descriptions while the experts are more likely to identify and subsequently solve management problems in the classroom using an external controls, for example, changing student seating arrangement. So for, uh, so for the last one is expert teacher have eyes have eye in the back of their head. For this part, novice teachers usually will focus all of their attention to only one and of the students in the classroom and it, it could be because they are nervous. They are trying to recall the script that they are they have written the night before or they are focusing only the one group of students that they know will respond to them well. So meanwhile, meanwhile, the expert teachers are capable of scanning an entire room stimulously uh, to better understanding how classroom uh, events are unfolding. Let's recall our school days. Do you remember when some of your friends are playing at the back of the classroom and suddenly the teacher uh, scolded your friends uh, whatever they are doing without even looking at them properly an entire classroom was like how did she know and she uh, she wasn't even looking she was not even looking at them directly 
Now we are going to continue with the issues and challenges faced by novice teacher. It was found that novice teachers have various challenges in teaching, including planning and implementation classroom management. So, um, and the lack of uh, physical infrastructure of this school in the first year of the professions. And so this is the three main issues by the novice teacher. Firstly, they are struggling with classroom management. This is the biggest challenge. Sometimes uh, that one student will give significant impact on the teaching, teaching institutions with a reminder of the classroom. Uh, there's one case of a, of a practicum teacher who mock the whole class uh, because she didn't like the class. She didn't like the class just because one of the students is unbehaved. Second one is burdened by the curriculum, curricular freedom. Another concern that new teachers commonly raise for lesson and unit planning even they have a mentor although such curriculum curricular freedom may be welcomed by expert teachers it appears to be a burden for a newcomers new teacher who have not uh, given them a, a hill the past are uh, reputable of lesson ideas of knowledge of what we were in the in the classroom. Novice teachers struggling, just uh, trying to come up with uh, enough curriculum and spending about 10 or 12 hours a day juggling with lesson planning and other stuff. Okay, so for the last one is on how the novice teacher draw, drowning in the unsupportive environments. The nature of teaching environments might not be a pleasant experience for some people during their early years of teaching. Novice teachers frequently experience or report that they face difficult in interaction and, uh, with their colleagues. So, uh, including the administration to the lack of corporations or even hosting from the teacher with more experiences. So, that's all from my part. We will continue uh, to the next presenter. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nur Alisa Binti Azinam. So, I will continue to the next point which is the school management issues. Okay, the first uh, issues that I will discuss is about the making decisions strategically. School is the center of managing and controlling a school body and its activities. In school, administrators are responsible personalities to overlook the disciplines making schedules, managing academic staff, and so on. So, management shoulders must make sure that Strategy decisions is taken not only for today's success but also need to survive in the long term. So the next is about the staff recruitment uh, that based on their academic performance. Recruiting capable and qualified teachers to teach to a whole population of students is also another highlighted issue faced by the school management. Unlike in the past, the new technology helped to trick down the most competent teachers out of a whole pool of applications, but still the competitions in the field of education make it uh, difficult to have a healthy recruiting process. So we move to the third issues which is a uh, lack of attendance attendance of students is drastically dropping due to many reasons some of these reasons are mostly unreachable by the school administrators if school have a way out uh, they are helpless as it is out of their control because uh, teachers need to 
monitor all their students in one time and need to take care of each of them reason for not coming to the school. Usually, this happens to students who are in the back class because they are less interested in learning and the teacher also less give the attentions for them in class. So the next is high cost in maintenance and operations. Maintaining a school or an education center is a huge challenge today for many administrators, especially with the high cost of maintenance and the cost need to be undertaken when adopting new trends which can be extremely expensive. As we face now, the teacher or staff in the school need to conduct their work or their teaching and learning sessions via online. So school need to provide uh, equipment such as uh, computers, LCD, internet and that will cost uh, a lot to um, to provide it in the school so the next is about the lessening in the school involvement of parents most of the parents do not have enough time to pay attention to their children's education life due to their busy life schedules providing for their family but when there is a uh, problems about their children's education the parents uh, will blame the teachers so the next is about the technology technology plays a big role in all the latest trend in modern society and the field of education is no exceptions but technology is not many school administrators strong suit and this has made it a real challenge for them to identify what and when they should adapt uh, the technology to improve their performance so there is a uh, school manage management issues that uh, i will di discuss in this topic so we we will move to the next which is on how to improve school management system so the first one is about the communication between teachers students staff and also the parents they need to improve their communication delivery to make sure that they can um, build a strong relationship between between teachers and parents, teachers and staff, and also teachers and students. So to make sure that they can uh, come can give a good delivery in communications, they need to control the emotions, behavior, and the language when they are talking to each other. Okay, so the next is about the technology. Adding more devices like computer, LCD, internet in school can up update management online system to be e easier to others. For example, when teachers need to uh, take uh, attendance of students, the teacher just click uh, on their gadgets or any uh, devices that can help the teachers to uh, record the students' attendance via online system. The teachers don't need to take the attendance of students on the papers again, the pap on the paper again, so that will be more easier for the teachers, right? So the next is about uh, educate staff by attending some courses to improve their skills, knowledge. Or achievement in school that's why uh, in school the management will provide a lot of courses for the teachers and also the staff to attend 
to improve um, their skills, knowledge, so that they can perform well in their uh, profession in school later. So the next is about uh, monitoring students' achievement, behavior, attendance, assignments, and so on. So this all the teacher needs to be responsible to monitor their student's achievement in the class. So the last one is about to manage the classroom by encourage students' needs that can make them interest in learning process. When the students have an interest in learning so that they have a positive mind to who learn in that class so the teacher need to encourage the students needs uh, by asking them about what they are like to do or what they are interested with like uh, they like to uh, draw or like to uh, sing or whatever so that the Teachers need to manage it well in the classroom. So, I think that's all from my part. So, I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. I am the last presenter. Let me introduce myself. My name is Siti Nur Shaira Binti Zahari. In my part of presentation, I will focus on the importance of leadership and management in school. I will start off with the importance of leadership. First of all, uh, school leadership is a policy priority. Why? Because school leadership has become a priority in education policy agenda across the world. It plays a key role in improving classroom practice, school policy and connection between individual school and outside world. Secondly, it contributes to improve student learning. There is increasing evidence that within each individual school, School leaders can contribute to improve student learning, student learning by shaping the condition and climate in which teaching and learning occur. Thirdly, leadership also can help to strengthen the ties between school personnel and the communities that surround them. According to Han Graver et al. in 2008, school leaders uh, of the most successful school in challenging school circumstances are typically highly engaged with and trusted by the school parent and white community. Moreover, the importance of leadership also uh, helps to foster both a positive and motivating culture for staff and high quality experience for learners. Last but not least, leadership uh, will help they uh, to use the data and information to coach and empower teaching staff to improve their own uh, pedagogy and student learning, which means a renewed focus on teaching and learning. Okay, let's look on the Let's look on the next slide, which, which uh, show the importance of management in school. Firstly, uh, management will help to improve the planning, organizing, and implementation of the school institutions, activity, and processes. This is because uh, they will. Uh, help the administrator of school boost their productivity and reduce time and effort required to manage school. Moreover, they also will accurately organize the school data. Secondly, uh, management will ensure appropriate utilization of human resources. Uh, next, 
uh, the management also will enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of infrastructure facility. Lastly, uh, the last important of the management is who uh, is responsible for planning and deciding the resources and development of the entire curriculum, which means they have to make sure the curriculum instruction and assessment align with Malaysian education standard and government education policy. Okay. Let's summarize briefly what we have looked at. Leadership is focused on vision, motivation, future, teams and people in the school while management provides system and processes essential to the smooth day-to-day -day running of the school. But we have to remember both leadership and management are essential for successful school development. Okay, that's all from us. Thank you for your attention.